the fourth year we we went from 365 to 630,000 we were way more calm we weren't running around like a chicken with our head cut off we cut out a lot of these like tree trimming sod installations like all of these jobs that are very complex and we simplified things and then we opened our second location last year so gotcha how many would you say what's like a percentage of employees that retain or come back in the springtime after what would you say was your biggest hurdle um in growing this first location there if i had what i had today like i could i could build it twice as fast and so how do we portray that through your flyer to show them that you're dealing with a professional not an amateur what would you say is one of your biggest uh challenges you face today running the uh, first location at what point of your business were you uh having to step down from kind of doing most of the field work and um, just doing it occasionally, I guess. In my mind, I needed to be like, okay, I, I, I am more valuable than being the one pushing the mower. All right, Ben. So where are you, like maybe a quick snippet of where you're at in business and yeah, what, what questions do you have and, and how can I help? We are a small lawn care landscape business located in uh, Weirscape, Virginia. And uh, we have been focusing a lot on landscaping and uh, not so much on lawn care, but I want to focus more on lawn care because it's routine, it's maintenance. It's a lot easier to have, um, I guess. So, um, and First of all, I want to thank you and Military Long Cuts for doing this. I want to thank you for jumping on this call. Um, it's amazing that you were able to build such a successful business. Uh, I think you guys projected over 500000 right, last year? Yeah, so last year we did about 560000 The year prior we did like six thirty, dollars but it's, it's all God. I'm That's just the awesome. vessel. Great God. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Now, it's so cool that you guys were able to do that and – um, I love that you guys have these core values being faith-based and, uh, we're the same way we, we, we like to, uh, we take great pride in that. So, um, I, and really your videos, the content you produce, it's so valuable. Um, and people just don't see how valuable it is. And it's awesome what you do and what you're able to achieve. Um, like a quick little story I was watching, I, I I've watched through probably most of your videos, um, and one of the videos I was watching recently, an interview with another business owner, um, about having yard signs, the 18 by 24 yard signs. And he said he puts two and he cuts them in half and he has double the amount. And I'm like, how did I not think of that myself? So my sister, she doesn't watch your videos, but she was asking me, Hey, where do I get yard signs? What should I do? I'm like, you have to get two, cut them in half. I'm like, um, so even content that you produce to business owners like lawn care business owners she does something completely different so it's even benefiting her so that's awesome and i love that you do that um how i stumbled across your videos is um last year um we were really trying to implement p4p and um i was kind of just joined and i guess p4p uh software didn't have much training videos and stuff and i was really confused how to how, how to implement it i don't know i was a little slow at getting it for some reason but um i started looking up on youtube business owners or maybe someone that was reviewing p4p um as as how they implemented themselves in their business and i came across yard dogs and military lawn cuts and I'm like, perfect. And got to know a little bit more about you. And I'm like, I need to follow this channel, subscribe, started watching the videos. And there's just so much great content. Honestly, I watched the videos where you have this huge beard. I don't know where it went, but <laughs> uh, even um, the, the videos where you're out there serving the country. And I want to thank you specifically for doing that. Thank you so much. Um, it, it is a great, um, it, it's, it's nice for me. I come from a, a country that used to be part of, um, a communist country and being here in the U S where freedom is fought for, and we are able to have this freedom. I really thank you for that. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Thank um, you. I appreciate that. No, it's awesome. It's awesome to see you being able to scale and grow and do so many things. One of my questions, I guess, wanted to start off. If, if you don't mind, I want to ask you, how old are you? I just hit 30. Oh, that's awesome. I saw your previous videos. You were focusing a lot on, I guess, cold calling to real estate and kind of looking into like um, house flipping. I don't know if you're still into that. Do you do any kind of real estate? So I don't. I don't do any wholesaling. The only real estate that we do is we buy it, buy real estate for our like lawn care company. I got you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, 
I guess going off of that, what made you get kind of like switch over to the lawn care industry and kind of leave that behind? So when I was younger, my dad actually, I actually owned a lawn care business when I was, I think, 14 or 15. Uh, my dad helped me print out flyers and he let me borrow the mower. And I had like four or five, six or seven customers that I would like, he would bring me to the house. He'd drop me off and probably go grab something to eat and then come pick me up in 30 minutes once the lawn was done. Um, but that's kind of what sparked the entrepreneurial bug in me. Uh, joined the military, served our country, was a paratrooper, did all those you know fun, cool stuff, deployed to Iraq, Baghdad, all that stuff. Came back and I was like, well, I don't want to work for somebody else after being told what to do for the last six years and uh, following orders from from the uh, from the military. I had a great experience and everything, but I just I wanted my freedom. Yeah, and that's yeah. what we have in America. And so uh, my wife and I put our minds together, and she used to uh, help her uh, parents out in the garden and stuff. And she's like, "Well, I know a little bit about plants," and I was like, "Well, I know how to mow lawns." And Military Lawn Cuts was born. So that's awesome. No, I was thinking of the same way. <laughs> Um, coming from, I guess, a country that used to be uh, part of the Soviet Union, coming here and having this freedom and seeing how much opportunities there are. It's like, I don't want to be locked up by these boundaries and stuff like that and walls. I want to be free. And um, that's a definitely biggest thing that keeps me, I guess, going is being and having this freedom in kind of uh, owning a business and stuff like that. Um, I have a list of questions I have. Um, they're not in specific order or anything. So some of the questions I have, they might be like cliche. I already listened to the answers you provided on your channel, but um, some of them might um, just maybe having your input directly to me might help me understand them maybe differently. So uh, forgive me if I repeat myself with others have already questioned. Um, what was your kind of business growth from year to year? I think you had it for, is this your fourth year or fifth year in business? Yeah. So I think we're going on five. So our very first year was me, myself, and I, we did $18,000 in revenue. The second year I had a couple part-time people that helped me out here and there. Uh, we did 125,000. The third wow. year, Larissa stepped away from her job from Aldi. She was a manager and she really uh, helped with the phones and stuff. So we went from 125,000 to 365,000. The fourth year we, we went from 365 to 630,000. And then last year we tweaked a couple things. We cut out some services. We kind of simplified things. So we actually went from 630 to 560 maybe, but we were way more calm. We weren't running around like a chicken with our head cut off. We cut out a lot of these like tree trimming, sod installations, like all of these jobs that are very complex and we simplified things. And then we opened our second location last year. So um, this year we're projecting hopefully a decent amount of top line growth. But um, yeah, that, that's kind of the gross revenues. How many employees do you currently employ at your first location there? It'll vary. So in the summertime, I mean, if you count Larissa and the office manager, there's roughly about 10 employees mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the summer. In the winter, that's that gets cut up into about half, about okay. five maybe. Um, and then at our new location, we have our one GM who's starting it off now. Gotcha. Gotcha. How many would you say, what's like a percentage of employees that retain or come back in the springtime after, I guess, uh, winter layoff. It used to be really bad because we didn't have our systems in place. We didn't like have a lot of stuff. Uh, the churn was just constant revolving door. I would say about uh, four out of the five will probably come back in the spring. Wow. Do they? Wh where do they find kind of employment during those two months or three, whatever? I have one guy who's got a, who got a part-time job at Walmart. And then I got another guy who is um, doing some side work, I think in like, like boxing in like um, a warehouse or something, but they, they both like prioritize military lawn cuts because with P for P they can make 28, 25 bucks an hour. So like these warehouse jobs aren't paying that. So they know like once the spring rush hits, like they're probably, they're going to get rid of the probably the part-time and focus fully at at military lawn cuts. Um, what would you say was your biggest hurdle um, in growing this first location there or maybe several hurdles you had to jump over? That's a good question. I think my biggest hurdle that comes to mind at the forefront of my mind is myself. It's amazing mentally, if you believe you can do something, you'll be able to accomplish it. And just not having enough maybe confidence, um, authority, direction, um, leadership. If I had what I had today, like I could 
I could build it twice as fast. Right. But like when you're first starting out, like you don't have the confidence yet. You don't know that the EDM and the flyers and like hiring system works like, you know, and you got to go through the reps to kind of, you know, learn and take a few bumps and bruises to, to get through it. Um, yeah. yeah. I'd say it's more of a mental game to be honest. Yeah, I, I see it. Another question I have is um, with marketing, uh, specifically like door hangers, uh, flyers, EDDM and stuff like that. How do you guys as military long cuts set yourselves apart from other people? Is there specific wording or specific kind of design you guys use on your flyers? Um, it just seems like everyone over there is just so generic. Everyone's just copying each other. How do you guys set yourself apart on that? Yeah, the it's a really good question, actually. So you want to portray professionalism, reliability, like how like the biggest pain point that we get from customers is my guy didn't show up. And so how do we portray that through your flyer to show them that you're dealing with a professional, not an amateur? We are a professional company. And the way that you do that, um, obviously, you know, you may have a bullet point that says like professional, reliable, licensed, insured, like those are kind of bullet points there. So this was our old flyer that I'll show you. And I'll just kind of talk while I'm holding it up. But as you can see, yeah. like there's a professional photo of Larissa and I, the company, mm -hmm. the company. Mm -hmm. So they know exactly who they're doing business with, right? People do business yeah. with people they know, like, and trust. So mm -hmm. get a good smiling picture professionally, you know, throw it up there. And I'll, another thing that's going to help us this year is we are doing a very, very bold guarantee. So how do you make an offer to somebody that they feel silly saying no to, right? If you, like, if you have a customer that's on the fence and like they need the service, but they don't fully trust you yet, how do you create that type of guarantee, satisfaction guarantee that like, no matter what you can't lose? If you don't like the service, we'll come back out and we'll fix it. No questions asked. We'll, we'll check with you to make sure it's right and we'll fix it. If still at that point, you're still unhappy with the service, we will you know, re refund you the money or pay a competitor of you know, our choosing or whatever, their choosing, whatever, however you want to structure it to do it for you, right? Like making that type of bold statement will separate you from everybody else. And because you will stand behind your product so much. And I promise you, every lawn care company locally around is not training their team as good as us. They're they're not sitting down with them and preparing them for, for the field as much as us, right? Like it's, you know, I, I'm confident in that because I talk to all of them and I know they're not doing it, you know? So like, I'm just being really confident in the product. How do you portray that through the flyer? So that way when they see it, they're like, wow, like let's, let's, let's give these guys a try. I'm smiling because a lot of this stuff I've heard from Florida turf pros as well, Jonathan, uh, or Chris, I forgot his name. I think it's Jonathan. Um, so he was also speaking about this uh, guarantee, which is awesome. So I wanted to hear your input on this as well. Um, so that kind of reinforces that idea. Awesome. Um, what would you say is one of your biggest uh, challenges you face today running the uh, first location? Well, in the, in the, <laughs> Currently, this moment, we migrate over to Copilot, so there's a lot of bumps and bruises on that. Like that's probably the immediate, but that's not really that'll that'll pass in a, in a few months anyway. The office and the admin side and systemizing like the office side. So last year we were very very top heavy. We had about three non-producing revenue employees to basically at our peak would be nine, eight to nine field members. If you do the ratio on that, it's it's barely it's almost barely like like a little bit more than like a one to two or a one to three ratio. And so we would need to get that closer to like a one to four ratio to increase bottom line and things like that. But the problem is, is like what we're doing in the office is not the most efficient way. There's there we're we're doing stuff in the office that like we need to just either A cut out or B systemize it or C create an automation around it so that way we don't have to do it. And so like in the field, we've made it very efficient. We know where to start, all this stuff. In the office side, that's not what I'm working on now. And I'll actually be sitting in on a ton of calls in the springtime. So I'm really going to be like deep dive in that. But that's our biggest hurdle right now. Um, and your wife is kind of taking charge over the first location now. Is that right? Yeah. So she's going to be the main location GM. Um, and then, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll support her like as a regional manager or I will. How much time does your wife um, or as the general manager spend on a weekly basis kind of at that location there? 
it fluctuates. Obviously, you know, she's there present Monday through Friday in the winter time. Um, again, we're kind of in this weird transition. We don't have in we had internet, but like we're not up there Monday through Friday, like eight, nine hours a day right now. It's probably it's more like maybe half days. Uh we okay. work from home the other half day, uh other half days. Uh but yeah, in the spring, I mean, it's not uncommon to have a 10 hour days. Um, you know, consistently. That makes sense. Um at what point of your business were you uh, having to step down from kind of doing most of the field work and um, just doing it occasionally, I guess? Uh, when we basically hit that year that we hit 630,000 is the year that I had to like not set like like in my mind, I needed to be like, OK, I, I, I am more valuable than being the one pushing the mower. And so when we went from 365,000 to 630 in that one year. That's that's when that click happened, because really up until 300,000, you can kind of manage it's it's a lot, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot, but you can kind of manage. And then in the wintertime, you don't need somebody really full time at 300 K like in the office. And if you yeah. do, it's only for a few hours a day, just catching emails and calls, you know. Do you guys run one or two or maybe multiple people cruise or and or why would you say maybe keeping one or two man crew? Is beneficial? Is there more efficiency uh, keeping it as one? I think I personally think keeping it as a one man crew is more efficient, but wanted to hear what you, you have to say on that. Yeah, there's pros and cons to everything on that. So in the springtime and summer, we're definitely running two man teams. Okay. There's just high demand. We need to put butts in both seats and, and really crank out the revenue that each truck can pull in. Okay. In the wintertime, when we go down to like half of our crew anyway, uh, we do run solo uh, routes and that's where like P for P. Oh my goodness. It's insane. When you're for, like from one man to two man, they make so much more money. The guys love it running. As one. They don't have to worry about anybody else. They don't have to worry about the other guy showing up late. They don't yeah. have to worry about the other guy dragging their feet. It's like, it's solely on them and they, yeah. they like it a lot. Now, like I would do kind of a hybrid schedule if I were you, because you just don't want like trucks sitting in the lot. And if you get a truck for every person in the, in the summer, well, well come winter time, you're going to have like three or four trucks just sitting there, yeah, you know? So like, true. you're also paying insurance on that, you know, it, it costs money. And so there, there's a, there's a give and take where you want to fully utilize your assets and trucks that you have, but you also want to have the guys make good P for P. And typically the guys that are showing up consistently, well, those are the guys that will normally let run solo because they they deserve it, you know? That makes sense, yeah. With the new location you guys have opened up, um, what was your last year's revenue? What are you kind of projecting for this year? And kind of what are you doing to accomplish that goal? Kind of what are the steps you're taking? Last year, uh, I basically started it like mid-summer. And I was really running the first location. I didn't have a lot of time and energy. I was just, I literally was building the company on one day a week, which was Wednesday. So it revenue very, very low. Um, I think we, we ended up doing like eight, a little over 8,000 last year annual. Now, with that said, going into this season, we do have 15 recurring customers right now. We're just wow. getting off the ground. And this is like great for people that are watching too, because I'm, we're literally doing it right now. So like all these little beginning things, like I'm able to like, reteach it because I'm going through it versus like already being at like 600,000. It's like, well, we're not really dealing with all the struggles. Well, I yeah. am right. Yeah, um, exactly. So this year we're projecting 125,000. That's, that's our GM's goal. Awesome. Um, what we're going to do is send out a ton of EDDM flyers for all the brand new neighborhoods locally in his area. Um, and then we're also going to do door hangers. So we're going to hire. So we just bought a truck for him. Uh, we're getting that all situated. And then we're going to hire two guys in the spring to literally fully all day, just hand out door hanger flyers. We're going to try to pump out 15 to 20,000 flyers at, at a 1% return. Cause I'm going to be running it conservatively. I think that'll get us to where we need to be. Uh, would those employees that you guys hire to hand out those flyers, would those be also the employees to run the business kind of the field workers there? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to over hire in the spring uh, with two guys, they can take their personal vehicle out there, park it, 
do their door hangers for hours, you know, four, four to six hours a day. And then as the calls come in, as the work comes in, they may, they may do flyers two days a week and then work three days a week. And then like, as more workload comes in, they'll just start to shift over to like doing more of the work. Over here in kind of the, we live in the Shenandoah Valley. There's a lot of hills, a lot of slopes, just about every property we service here has a ditch, has a slope. Um, so we use a lot of zero turn mowers, stuff like that. No one really out here is pushing, mo push mowing anything here. I don't know if you had any experience with training anyone on zero turn mowers or anything like that. Maybe you have an idea or suggestion on how a kind of a training plan would go with someone learning to use a zero turn mower, stuff like that. How would a training kind of plan? Typically how we have it now is one week they're learning weed eating. Next week they are on the zero turn. The third week we're switching off. Um, if it's a two man crew, they're switching off one, one house. They're doing the zero turn. The next house he's doing the weed eater and then vice versa. So, uh, but maybe there's a faster, more efficient way to train. Um, any input on that? Um, when do they do edging and blowing? Well, we have them kind of doing that throughout the two weeks. That's not kind of a separate kind of training. We really focus on weed eating and um, um, uh, zero turn. Edging, we don't typically use an edger, so we use the weed eater as an edger for most of our lawns. Uh, blowing, that's just whoever gets to it first. Um, Got it. They start Got it. blowing. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think you have the way you have it structured is good. So, like, they're doing the bigger equipment at the end. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would recommend that, too. Obviously, you don't want to bore them, but if you can yeah. create some type of, like, I'm going to call it TikTok version or YouTube mm -hmm. short like a mm -hmm. 45 second. Hey, these are all the, when you're, when you're on the mower, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this really, really quick and exciting. And, you know, and have that be like, Hey, guy, hey, you're going to watch this 45 second video before you even jump up there. The other thing that I would do. Okay. So when you actually have them out in the field, there's, th this is how we train people. There's basically a three-step process. So number one is like, I'm going to do you watch. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that's just like the front yard, like real mm -hmm. quick, you're going to watch me for three to five minutes. Like just you're going to watch exactly how I do it. You're mm -hmm. going to see what right looks like. Number two, um, you're going to jump up and I'm going to watch you and I'm going to coach you. So you may do a stripe or two and where I'm going to say, stop, jump off. Hey, I saw you do this. You're creating a rut when you turn, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're very active, hands-on of coaching for mm -hmm. that first five to 10, 15 minutes, right? And then after that, um, once you, once you feel confident in their ability, they've done a few, then they do. And then you double, and then you go back and check. You don't stand there and watch them the whole time. Um, and that's kind of like the three-step process that we use for really anything. Um, I'd say for training, maybe instead of like, I don't know if you do commercial properties, but instead of having them test out the zero turn on day one, like on a residential lawn, maybe, maybe put them in a re, uh, commercial one. Maybe you have a, a field by your house that you want to do some I don't know, like real quick. Hey, for 10 minutes, we're just, I'm going to show you how to like, you're going to do a couple stripes here to get under control. Cause you're right. When you're turning stuff and you get close to objects, you don't want to slam it into a house yeah. or something, you know? Um, do you, in your business, uh, use credit cards for, uh, like you personally, when you need to buy things and stuff like, do you use a credit card or debit card? So we do both. Okay. So at our main location, we do use a credit card at our new location. We're going straight debit. We're simplifying the process. We're scaling because we want to do multiple locations. It's just a lot having to pay a credit card off each month. Like I'd rather just a binary, like money comes in, money goes out, money comes in instead of like it having like another complexity of like, hey, having to pay the credit card off. When you speak about opening up a new location, is this kind of a uh, separate business or is this still under kind of your same uh, business entity, I guess, but just a new kind of geographical location? Hey guys, wanted to take a quick second here. So I don't ask or promote anything on this channel or sell anything directly to you guys. I provide this value completely free to you and hopefully it helps grow and achieve greater success in your business. But what I wanted to ask uh, from you is if you could click that subscribe button and share this video with someone, an entrepreneur in the lawn care industry that you feel could benefit from this content. More importantly, it may change someone's future. We'll see you guys here in a bit. So it is a different geographical location. They, they are housed at the same like shop area, um, but it is a completely separate LLC. It is not okay. intact at all, um, only for this first one. Now, when we get to three, four, five, and six, 
from easy from an easier tax perspective, it would make sense to have an S corp at the top and then have your LLCs underneath it. But for this for this one, we just wanted to completely separate everything and um, and do it that way. What's kind of a reason why you guys are opening up a second location? Why not just um, is it kind of drive time, losing efficiency, going to these new areas, or why not just kind of build this one? and kind of just drive to that location and have crews there. My personal goal is to develop like leaders in the lawn care industry. Mm -hmm. And so the way that I feel as though to do that is to have multiple opportunities for upward mo growth in the, in the company. And if I just have one big conglomerate like location, number one, it kind of leaves you somewhat vulnerable for like li uh, liability and stuff like that. Um, the other is, yeah, we just wanted to kind of learn the ropes of like, like, like the whole, the whole goal that we got into business also is like to build a business that runs without us. Mm -hmm. So if I built one big massive company that did $2 million in sales, would I really be able to separate myself or am I always going to be doing those high, high level stuff? Yeah. So me getting forced to open a second location has forced me to be like, okay, now we got to double everything. We have to fine tune our systems, make it easier, make it scalable. And like, it's really forcing me to, to think outside the box to like streamline things. I love that you are just sharing your knowledge and just, there's so much value in what you share with others. And again, thank you so much for doing this and praise God for this and what you guys are able to accomplish and hope you guys can accomplish so many more greater things through this. So. Hey, hey, hey.